not giving up. We're trusting God to the end. So I just want to encourage you while we're waiting. I put a little music on while we're waiting. God is faithful. He's so good. And he's so wonderful, so glorious. He's the healer of us all. So I just want to encourage you, invite someone to tune in to Healing School, where God always shows up. He never leaves us nor forsakes us, because we live in a house called Healing School. It's a place where we stay healed, stay whole, stay complete. Nothing missing and absolutely nothing broken. So praise the Lord. Thank you all for tuning in today. Whether you're watching now or later, God is faithful. He is good. He is wonderful and kind. And he's the healer of us all. And so while I'm waiting, I just want to give God glory, honor, and praise for his faithfulness towards us. He's so wonderful. He sent his word, his son, Jesus, to heal us. He sent his word to deliver us and set us free. So while we're waiting, I just want to encourage you. We're not going to quit. We're going to stand to see the salvation of God. We're going to stand by faith on this word. Stand by faith that what his word says, that's what he is, and that's what he does in us and through us. So as always, let's go ahead and um, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we just thank and praise you right now. For you are wonderful, you are glorious, you are marvelous. We thank you, Lord, those that are standing by faith to see the salvation of God. They're trusting you with all their heart, leaning not to their own understanding, but trusting you, Lord. Father, we yield ourselves to you right now. We decrease so you can increase. This is healing school. It's a place that we live and dwell in you, all believers. We live in the healer. It's a place where you teach us through your word what is available to us. So, Father, we thank you right now. For the manifestations of the goodness of God, the manifestation of the glory and the faithfulness of God. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise for your word sent to make us whole. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful, so glorious. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and turn our Bibles. We're just going to continue on where we were last week. Just standing on the promises of God, not quitting, but just standing and trusting him forever and ever that his word will always, always come through for us. Hallelujah. So let's just jump right on in there. So I have Evangelist Sharon Walker and welcome to Healing School. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. So glad that you're here. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. What a wonderful, wonderful God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I see that we are online now. Yeah, we're going to get that a little focus there. Yes, God is faithful. He is glorious. He is marvelous. It looked kind of fuzzy online. Yeah, but it's very, very fuzzy. Yeah. All right, they're fixing that. While they're fixing that, we're just going to go ahead on and get right in here. Thank you, Jesus. So God is our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our strengthener. So today, we're going to talk about healing school, where being in Christ Jesus is the place we live. That's what we were talking about when I first came on. Healing school is the place where every believer lives. We live in the healer. We live in him. So our job or my position is to remind us what belongs to us. So what we're holding on to, what we're standing and where we're standing, who we're standing it with and where we're standing at. We're in Christ Jesus. When you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, no matter who you are, he put himself in us. He put his spirit in our spirit, cleansed us from all unrighteousness with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Thessalon 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it said he sanctified us wholly spirit soul and body so when he said that I, it left us we know that he sanctified cleansed our spirits he cleansed our soul and now it's up to us to believe that he cleansed our bodies and who he is is who we are what he is is what we have and what we are he says we are as he is amen if we're as he is then he said so that's what we are so our job is to build our faith take hold to what belongs to us 
So a lot of us, even including myself especially, is that, you know, I believe, but then I'll, do I believe it's for me? Do I believe this is mine? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do I believe the power that he put on the inside of me belongs to me? Do I believe that as he is, so am I? So if I believe that, then I should be expecting it, expecting things to change, expecting every part that's on the inside of me to line up to who Jesus is in me, who I am in him. Because his word says that we're one. So let's go ahead and look at that. So if you're believing God to see the manifestation of what Christ is in you and what belongs to you, this is your opportunity right now. We're building our faith in Christ Jesus. We're standing together. We're not going to quit. When where you're weak, we're going to build you up to make you strong in Christ Jesus. So we're building our faith to everybody can see the body of Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. Every word that he said, do you know every word he said is what belongs to us? What that this this life of God on the inside of us is Christ in us supernaturally. The written word that he wrote down is what he is and what's available. Gave us straight up example. I mean, word by word, just he just laid it out for us. What's available, what he did for them in every single miracle. You should always look for what belongs to you. You could always look for in every single miracle. What can I take out of that that I can have right now? Come on, somebody. So let's look at um just just start off. Just keep living in the light. Just reminding yourself that you're every day when you wake up in the morning that the very life of God is on the inside of you and not making him like you know I used to think of him way down the yonder were you like that thinking God was somewhere far away but God is saying I'm on the inside I'm in your mouth and your heart I'm closer than a best friend I'm closer than you you could ever dream I am so if we could only see how how he's right here right now building a relationship with the life of God on the inside of you. That's what God wants us to do. So keep reminding yourself every day, building your faith that you're in the light. So let's go to John 1.1. One, one. Woo-hoo-hoo, John 1.1. One, one. Uh-huh. So it says, in the beginning was the word. So we're going to talk about that so we can see that this power of God, that what God did was so awesomely wonderful. Wonderful. I mean, it was just, just beautiful what he did. He made a way when Adam and Eve messed up, he made a, a way for us, for himself to take us, take us back, to put us back in the kingdom. So we can begin to see how wonderful that is, how big that is, how great that is. He brought us back in the kingdom. He, he, just did, he, he brought us back on the inside of him. Hallelujah. He brought us back in his glory, his might, his ability, and his strength. Praise the Lord. He brought us back in the light. He brought us back in his goodness. He brought us back in his power. He brought us back in his strength. And everything that was available for us when Adam and Eve was walking in the power is available for you now. So God, what he did through Jesus Christ is just, I mean, awesome. He made a way through his own son that we can live on the inside of him, take hold of everything that his son is, everything that he is available to him is available to us. He made us all one. It's basic, hallelujah. Can we put it back to where it was? Thank you. Yes, hallelujah. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Uh-huh, talking about Jesus. And the word was God. It says, now we got to remember what he's saying here. The same was in the beginning with God. We know this is, he's talking about Jesus. We're going to keep reading so you can see that he's talking about Jesus. He said, all were made by him. Everything was made. So everything that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost did in, in Genesis 1, 26, they did it all together. Everything was made by him. Was not nothing made without, was not anything made that was made. So everything that made, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost was right there together. And then it says some words that God wants us to hold on to, to remind yourself every day that the relationship that God wants with us, want with every believer is to, to just spend time with them. Spend time in the presence. Spend time in his glory. See yourself in the life and light. He says, in Jesus, that him is Jesus, was a life. Now, this is where we live in it. So now, look, read it and see yourself on the inside now, you know. And the life, 
his life so let's think back up a little bit the word life is zoe that's the god kind of life when we think about what kind of life that that the Father and the Son and, and the Holy Ghost have, what kind of life they have. We know it is a life of power. They give us an example of their life, the God kind of life. We've been saying that for years. I have the God kind of life. I got the God. What are you saying? I have his power in me. I have the kingdom on the inside of me. Um, John 14, 7, it says it's not meat or drink, but it's righteousness is inside of me. It's peace in me. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. I got the kingdom on the inside of me. I got everything that he is, his power, his ability. That's what makes the good news good. It's because the good news is that the, the life of God is put on the inside of us. And we all become one. Oh, my God. We become one. Not individually just hanging outside of the kingdom. But we all, body of Christ, we're in this together. That's why we need not to wrestle against each other. We're in this as one. One teamwork make the dream work. So we're in this life, a life of power. I mean, he did miracle after miracle, story after story, situation after situation, circumstances after circumstance, just demonstrating to us over and over and over and over again the what's available in the very life of God. And how you can spend time with him. You can hang out with him. He's not far away. He's in your mouth and your heart. He's the word of faith in which we proclaim. He's right here, right now. We're standing in the very sea called the life of God. And in this glorious power, oh my gosh, the time goes so fast. He said, this life is the light of man. I'm in the light. That word light means literally I'm in the fire. The, if we begin to look at how big God is. He made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the fountains of waters. My God. You know how big the sun is? You know how big the moon is? You know how big? It, I mean, my God, he's bigger than that. And we're on the inside of him. So what make me, us so big, because we're really in the ant family. <laughs> Well, make us so big and, and mighty and powerful because we're on the inside of him. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he. He's the greater one. He's the greatness. He's the power. But he gave unto us. He gave us or bestowed to us or, 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 or gave, like he said, I gave you my son. I, so when you get on the inside, you all want. We are standing right here. We're standing in this glorious gospel. The Bible says in Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power. It's dynamite explosive ability. It's a regenerator. It's a miraculous, miraculous power. So what do we do? We ought to stand until we see the salvation of God. Quickly, I'm going to go over this because I want to jump down before because I got to pray. In, in verse 14, it says, and the word was made flesh, just so you know this is Jesus. Um, and we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, talking about Jesus, grace and truth. Get down to verse 29, you're going to find out his name. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. We on the inside of this Savior. He gave us, he presented to us his only begotten Son. He presented to us the Holy One. He presented to us healing, miracle power to live on the inside of us. We're standing in the Almighty God, believer. Oh, yes, lift up your hands and thank God for the power of God on the inside of you. You're in a regenerator. You're in a transformer. And God said, I want you to believe that that power that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. That glory that raised him from the dead lives on the inside of you. And he wants us to stand like never before. Stand, not looking back at the situation. Stand. Because the devil constantly putting you in your head. I'm tell me, I'm a witness of this. Just constantly. You, you got to watch your thoughts. You got to watch what goes in because you, you think, oh, Father, I praise you and then this thought come you got to fight the good fight of faith with the word and God said he wants you to stand and he said having done all to stand stand and then we know that this scripture God gave us and what of our prayer and then um, Bishop gave it as well Bishop Kefe Butler for, for the acceleration of this year Isaiah 58 8 then shall thy light break forth as the morning that life of God on the inside of you the light shall break forth as the morning and what's going to happen? And thy health shall spring forth speedily. Uh-huh. Yes, he said that. He said, your health will spring forth. 
just keep standing just keep trusting keep relying he said your health will spring forth speedily so build your relationship that he's right there build your relationship that by his stripes we are healed build the relationship with Jesus him on the inside of me his spirit in me we are one build it up he said righteousness shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your re reward oh come on lift up your hands and give God thanks and praise for his glory tonight oh and don't you quit every day you rise up and I, I remember the one of the words that that um um brother jerry savell gave us it said every day you rise up and say lord show me your glory you show me your manifested presence show me your goodness show me the power of god that i'm dwelling in so every day put that in your notes every day rise up and remind yourself lord i thank you i'm on in the presence i'm in the presence of god i'm in the life of god this life in me is power this life in me is fire i want to see the manifestations of your salvation i want to see my brand new heart come on somebody I want to see my brand new brain my brand new eyes I want to see this wholeness that you put on the side and on the inside of me so rise up every day and thank God for the manifest manifested presence that life of God on the inside of you anybody want to see the glory you want to see his manifested presence Isaiah 58 8 says it says then shall thy thy health shall spring forth speedily and righteousness shall go before you and the glory the glory of the Lord is the manifested presence of God the manifested goodness of God is the manifested power of God and it shall of the Lord shall be our re reward come on lift up your hands and give God thanks and praise and you let them know every day father I want to see the manifested presence I want to see the manifested goodness of God I want to see the manifested power of God in my life I mean who who what is it like to stand in every day and never seeing nothing oh it's time for me to see my my stuff this is my inheritance we inherit it inherit it the power of God and this power of God on the inside of us heals all sickness heals all diseases all manner of sickness all manner of diseases that's how great he is that's how big he is this inheritance that we have inherited it's exceeding greatness of power come on it's Jesus he exceed the regular amount of power it's exceeding greatness of power might ability and strength oh father we thank you tonight that by your stripes we are healed we are the body of Christ and you've given us your word and your word cannot fail not one jot not one tittle not one of your word can fail your life is in me your life is in me right now your glory is in me and your glory is in me right now and your glory can never fail hallelujah your might is on the inside of me your might is in me right now and you can never fail hallelujah I am healed I am whole and I thank you Lord God I'm healed I'm whole because I'm on the healer I'm in the healer I'm in the deliverer I'm in the house of the Lord I'm in your goodness I'm in your power come on somebody open your mouth and declare his glory declare his power on the inside of you and give him thanks for the gift of God oh my God just to even say those words as being in the body of Christ ought to make you shout hallelujah I have a gift called God God almighty the Lord of glory the God who made the heavens <clears throat> the God who made the earth and the seas and the fountains of waters I got the gift of God my God you ought to be praising God right now thanking him for life on the inside of you that life is God hey somebody praise him that life in me is fire that life in me heals all manner of sickness the life of God in me heals all manner of diseases the life of God in me makes me whole hallelujah nothing missing and nothing broken he makes me whole hallelujah he's not going to tell any of something different than he's telling me Peter went to Aeneas he was in the paralyzed and Acts 9 34 paralyzed for eight years and, and the, the, the a Christian man he went to the body of Christ and he began to, to 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 be let Aeneas be the example to the body of Christ and he went to Aeneas and he said these words Aeneas laid in that bed for eight years and he went to Aeneas and he said Aeneas Jesus Christ 
makes you whole. Rise, get up. And he got up and made his bed. Oh, well, I got a word of the Lord for all of us tonight. Just tonight. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Rise up and take authority. Rise up and fight the good fight of faith. Rise up and take hold of the word of the Lord for us. It's Jesus Christ. He makes me whole. He's my salvation. You're my deliverer. Hallelujah. I'm victorious. I believe according to the power that was wrought in you and raised you from the dead is in me. Come on, lift your hands and say that life is in me. That life is in my bones. You're in my body. You're in my muscles. You're in my joints. I am healed. I am whole. I am delivered. Why? Because you're the deliverer on the inside of me. And Jesus Christ, I lift you up tonight. I give you glory tonight. I honor you tonight. You are everything I need. You are a mighty God. Come on, lift him up. You are wonderful. You are glorious. You are the lifter of my head. You are my bright and morning star and I give you praise and I give you glory for loving on me I give you glory for keeping me I give you glory and honor for cleansing me scraping me clean from all unrighteousness and I want to thank you tonight come on open your mouth if you're in a hospital you're in a hospital bed you're here right now wherever you are begin to lift up Jesus on the inside of you. His power scrapes you clean and he heals all manner of sickness all manner of diseases all is all in the heavenly language all is anything everything from the least of things to the greatest of things to the latest of things everything all new eyes come on the power of God in you believer the house that you live in the place that you dwell in. You're sitting in a heavenly place. That's a position in Christ Jesus. And in this glorious place, he was made righteous. So we live in him. So we're made righteous. We've been manufactured righteous and we call our bodies whole. We call our bodies full of the fullness of God. And you in us makes us whole amamaha eyes brain whole rababa she manama nanaha ears whole rabashi ki amdororo mashaha oh lungs whole mama remachi ki amdororo manaha oh come on out your belly tareme remaha he made us whole shimdere namanda naha oh come on out of your mouth shamdona naha wholeness is wholeness shamdorola maha any way you turn it shamdorola he said, I made you whole. It's impossible for God to be in me. And just, just be in me for just a little piece of me. He made me whole and I'm holding on to that. The wounds for my transgressions. Come on, somebody stand with me. The bruises for my iniquities. The restraint for peace was upon him. It's by his strength. We are healed. We are the body of Christ. Just them words alone. That's powerful, huh? Saying I'm the in the body of Christ. Really? Oh, glory to God. I'm in his glory. I'm in his manifested power. I'm in his manifested presence. I'm in the manifested glory. Oh, Kiki on that Amanda ha come on y'all I'm in his manifested goodness I am whole rise up and take authority we're in the body of Christ never lose, lose use those words so lightly every inch of you was whole you're full with the fullness of God let's lift him up we thank you Lord you're right here with us you're right here in us and as we stand, as we walk, as we move in the glory of God, we're going to thank you right now for the price you paid, for the life you gave in us to make us whole. And we lift you up tonight.
Oh, excuse me, and we honor you tonight. Shomai Yaraha. Oh, my God. Shomdoronamanda Remaha. Oh, Marama Shamanaha. Come on, no matter what you're going through tonight, open your mouth and decree and declare. Shamdoronamaha. I am whole. Rambashe Maha. I am fixed. Shamdoronamaha. I am strong in the Lord. Igre Mashaha. And in the power of his might. Shake Ramanamaha. Jesus Christ has made me whole. Ramamaha. And I'm standing in the sea of God and I give him thanks and praise for his life in me his life is his kingdom is his power is the glory is his righteousness the power and the ability to make everything right he is in me he is in me a jubilee come on jubilee on the inside shamdodaha jubilee in me shamdodaha somebody say what does that mean horovoshaha home that it means everything the devil stole shikromaha jesus born on the cross shikromaha got up on the third day shikromaha made a way come on somebody for us to get on the inside shamdodaha to live in him supernaturally omdoraha and everything that he is shokromaha all of his power, Shamdoraha, is on the inside of us. Shamdoraha. Come on, Shamdoraha. It's Jubilee Day. Come on, rise up and take hold. Jesus Christ has made you whole. Ramashaha. Jesus Christ, Shamdoraha. Jesus Christ, Shamdoraha. Jesus, Jesus, Shamdoraha has made us whole. Ramaya Maha. Come on out of your belly, Shamdoraha. Rise up and give him glory for the presence. Rise up. You got brand new heart, brand new liver, brand new lungs, brand new joints. Brand new muscle, brand new back. Brand new sciatic nerve, brand new heart. I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creature. All things pass away. All is all. Any and everything from the least to the greatest to the latest shamdolololaha and all things are of god shamdolololaha i am mashatayaha anamamaha come on lift up your hands and give god glory shamdolololaha and thank him for being in you shamdolaha oh marama shamdolololaha immersing you shamdolololaha lifting you shamdolololaha oh we lift you up lord god and we honor you tonight and we say blessing and glory honor and power belongs to you oh we lift you up oh we honor you lord oh we cry out thank you <laughs> oh, come on, thank him tonight. Come on, new creatures, let's lift him up. You're full with the fullness of God. Lift him up. You're full with the fullness of God. We are full with the fullness of God. He said, by my stripes, I poured out my blood. I poured it out for you. A living sacrifice. We are healed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord. Oh, we are whole. Shamdorada Maha. Oh, Ramano Marabaha. Oh, Rabba Shamdorana Madre Gramaha. Let's lift them up tonight. Shamdorada Menaha. Jesus Christ has made us whole. Shamdorada Baha. Home dono Mamma 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 Ha. And as we lift them up tonight, Shamdorada Maha. Oh, my God, my God. Shamdorada Baha. I want you to see yourself in the glory tonight. Shamdorada Maha. See yourself in the very life of God his life oh he put some of it in the word right everything we need to stand his life he turns water into wine he opens the Red Sea the Jordan Sea come on the Jordan River he opened blind Bartimaeus eyes he healed the 
blind. Come on, check out his life tonight. Oh, come on. He healed the woman with issues, circumstances and situations in her body. Come on, lift up. He put his life in us. Oh, ha, 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 ha. He healed the man with the leprosy. We worship him. He's the healer of us all. Many times. He healed them all. That's his life. Come on. Life in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. His righteousness is in us. Come on, we're living in Him. And He in us. We worship you. Come on, believers, see yourself in the light tonight. See yourself in the glory. We honor you. You are the greatness. You are the power. You are the victory, Lord, your majesty. Make sure you don't look at him far away. He's right here. Victory, your victory, your victory, you are the majesty. Come on. Your victory, come on, y'all. Victory, victory, you are the majesty.
Glory, hallelujah. Glory to the highest. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Yes, I'm worthy, Lord. just worship you tonight in the beauty of your holiness hallelujah holy 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 is the lord god almighty hallelujah and where we stand and sit tonight this is holy ground glory to god hallelujah 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 wherever god is it is holy glory to god hallelujah so we just honor his presence tonight hallelujah hallelujah we just worship you god we worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to say good evening and welcome to Word of Faith International Christian Center, St. Thomas VI. You're in the right place, I'm telling you, at the right time to receive the right word that will change your very life forever. So whether you're joining us in the sanctuary tonight, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or the Word of Faith website, I want to say good evening and welcome. So we always begin our midweek Bible study with our confession of faith. So I'm going to invite everybody to join in with me tonight as we make our confession for 2024. We're standing on his word and we got bulldog tenacity. We will not let go until we see the manifestation in our lives and not just in our lives, in every area of our life. Glory to God. So if you can stand, stand please, but repeat this after me. Say 2024 is the year of acceleration and demonstration. Everything will be sped up. Angels will work on my behalf to speed things up. God is speeding up the clock on my behalf. Increase is coming my way rapidly. Oh, increase joy. Increase knowledge. That old was not good. Let me say it again. Say, increase is coming my way rapidly. Oh, increase joy. Increase knowledge. Increase wisdom. Increase revelation. Increase understanding. Increase divine financial wealth. Increase healing. Acceleration of wellness. I am. A Psalms 112, child of God, increased demonstrations to the unbelievers that he is God and coming quickly. It'll be the best of times for us and the worst of times for the unbeliever. This is the year of progression, the year of advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing my highest expectations fulfilled. This is the year of more and more in 2024. More outpouring, 
more healings, more miracles, and more salvations. I'll stay in faith. I'll remain focused on the promises of God. And I'll not allow anything in the world to distract me. Say, this is my year. This is my year. This is my year. Jesus, you got your church back. Show us your glory. Show us your manifested power. Now, if you believe that you receive, give God a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, give the Lord another shout of praise. How many know there's joy in the house of the Lord? Is there joy in the house of the Lord? Is there joy in the house of the Lord? Glory to God. Put your hands together tonight. Are you ready to praise them? Say yes! Hallelujah! Come on, y'all. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Come on. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, it's God of your praise. We worship the God who heals. We worship the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. He hung up on, he hung up on that cross. He rolled up from that grave. My God still rolling strong away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Shout it out. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Come on, everybody. Let me hear you say that. Come on. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars. We were the beggars. And now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. And now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy, oh, oh, oh. There's joy hey. in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Come on, y'all. We shout out the praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We we'll shout out their praise. Hey, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Shout it out. We we'll shout out their praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We we'll shout out your praise. Now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, and now we're running free. 
We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing. Come on, let me praise. hear you say we were. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. And now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Hey, we shout out joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out joy. There's joy in the house. Hey, hey. There's joy. Come on, let's give them praise tonight, and we won't be quiet. Shout out to the Lord in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. Shout out to praise. Oh, oh. Shout out to praise. Somebody shout it out tonight. Shout out to praise. We'll shout out to glory. Come on. Shout out to praise. We'll praise Him in the morning. Shout out to praise. We'll praise Him in the noonday. Shout out to praise. We'll praise Him. Anybody want to praise Him tonight? Shout out to praise. We'll praise Him in the morning, in the noonday, in the night. Shout out to praise. Somebody shout it out. Shout out to praise. shout tonight. To Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we shout out your praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to say good evening and welcome to Word of Faith. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking at our house tonight. Amen. And we're all family. So let's take an opportunity on love on one another tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn around if you can. Hallelujah. Wave at him. Hallelujah. Give him a virtual hug. Amen. Do a little something, something. Hallelujah. And find somebody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Let them know you love them with the love of the Lord. And for those that are viewing online, we don't believe your visit with us is by accident, but by divine appointment. And we believe that God has something wonderful in store for you tonight. All you got to do is have your heart wide open and receive a fresh rhema word from the Lord. Amen. And if this is your very first First time here at Word of Faith International Christian Center online, we're asking you to do this. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, we want you to go to the chat, let us know your name, and let us know where you are visiting from. If you're on the Word of Faith website, if you go to the front page, you'll see Contact Us. Click that button, enter your information, and let us know about your visit with us tonight. Anytime that you come to Word of Faith, whether you're in person, whether you're online, amen, we're going to always greet you with L-O-V-E, love. I want to quickly go over the announcement. I want you to pay close attention to our monitors tonight. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to everybody celebrating in the month of April. We got any April birthdays in here? We saying happy birthday all month long. Any anniversaries? Happy anniversary all month long. Amen. Pick up a copy of the Bible reading calendar for the month of April. Amen. That's at the back if you'd like a copy. Amen. And not only this the uh, Bible reading for the month, you also get the calendar of events for the month. Join us for our next touch group meeting. That's tomorrow night, Thursday, April 18th. Uh, some start at 6 o'clock. That's our youth ministry touch group. And then our single with purpose, covenant partners, and our VIP Silver Saints. They start at 7 o'clock. Touch group is a place to connect, a place to protect, and a place to grow. To join a touch group, go to our website or call the church office at 774-8617. The SWAT team won 15 souls on Saturday. Amen. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guess what? You get an opportunity to go out with them this month. Amen. On Saturday, April the 27th. Prayer begins promptly at 11 o'clock. For more information, you can contact Minister Julie Francis. Mark your calendars for the Word of Faith Beach Picnic. That's going to be Saturday, May the 4th at 10 o'clock. Join us for a day of food, fun, and fellowship. Food donations are needed. You want to see Minister Bachelor to make your donation. Amen. Hallelujah. Right there. Amen. She put the Baptist finger up. Amen. All right here. All right here. Praise God. Join us for our Mother's Day celebration, Sunday, May the 12th. We're almost in May, y'all. Woo, Mother's Day is coming quickly. Monday, May, uh, uh, May the 12th at 10 o'clock with special ministry of the word by evangelist Sharon L. Walker. It will be a day filled with special surprises, lunch prepared or purchased by the men, and a dynamic men's praise team. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> Come and be blessed, and don't forget to invite a friend. It's either going to be made or purchased. Whatever way, we're going to be grateful and thankful. Amen. Glory to God about that. Mark your calendars for the following upcoming events at Word of Faith Southfield you may want to attend. The Ministerial Leadership Conference is May the 1st through the 3rd. The conference speakers are Bishop Butler and Reverend Mark Barclay. Um, we got God's Beauties Women's Conference, June the 20th through the 22nd. The conference speakers are Pastor Deborah Butler, Minister Terry Savelle Foy, Pastor Michelle Ferguson, and Minister Christina Jenkins. We want to keep the Savelle family up in prayer. Amen. Glory to God. I was looking at her page today where she had, well, not today, the other day, and she had talked about her father, and she was telling everybody to pray for her family. But she had mentioned he had just preached at a church in California, and he was on his way home, but he took a detour and went home to heaven instead of home on this earth. Amen. So we want to keep that family lifted up in prayer. Word of Faith Annual Convention, that's October 3rd through the 5th. The conference speaker are Bishop Keefe Butler, Dr. Bill Winston, and Reverend Jim Hockaday. Amen. So get yourself ready. Purchase your tickets. Get yourself in gear. Amen. That you can attend one of these conferences in Southfield. Um, Father's Day afternoon sale on the Contiki, Sunday, June the 16th at 2.30, from 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. Come bring your dad or bring a family member to enjoy a cruise around the harbor, food, music, games, and swimming at Honeymoon Beach. The cost per person is $45. Uh, no matter the age, sign up in the back to let us know how many tickets you would like to purchase or so you, maybe you want to bless somebody. Generation 620 Youth Ministry, Youth Camp is coming quickly. It's going to be June 24th through the 27th. It's going to be at Center Lake Bible Camp in Tuscan, Michigan. If you're interested in making a donation to a youth, you want to see Minister Francis. Um, Pistis School and Ministry, register for the 2024-25 school year. Pistis is a two-year comprehensive ministerial training program. That's available online. I'm going to say that again. Online. You don't have to travel to Michigan. Amen. You can, unless God told you. Amen. But you can take the classes online. So if you sense a full-time ministry call on your life, Pistis is the school for you. We got a graduate right there in the back in the blue. Amen. Glory to God. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hallelujah. She did the online classes. Glory to God. For more information, and you can even speak to uh, Sister Lily. Amen. You got some questions? You can speak to her. She's like, don't send nobody to me. I'm sending people to you. Amen. You can speak to Sister Lily about the program, the classes, and all of that. For more information, pick up a brochure at the back table, or you can email info, I-N-F-O, at pistis.cc. And, of course, you can always check the Healthy Life Corner. Got some new stuff in the back, the, the olive oil, black seed oil, and don't forget about them umbrellas. Amen. But don't give me one for Mother's Day. Amen. Glory to God. Give me another day, okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. But um, you can always pick up something in the back. Join us for early morning prayer, Monday through Friday from 6 to 7, and Saturdays at 10 o'clock. Join us in person or on Facebook, YouTube, the Word of Faith website, or by conference call. Is that correct, Pastor? By conference? No, no more conference call. So you got to join us on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word of Faith website only, or come out in person. Amen. So the conference call line is discontinued.
okay? You can join us for pre-service prayer every Sunday at 7.30. Mighty Men of Valor pray every Tuesday at 6 o'clock. That's led by our pastor. Tuesdays and Thursday afternoon, we have prayer right here in person, prayer only, that led, that's led by Sister Vincent. We got Generation 620 youth that pray every Friday at 6 a.m. We got Ambassadors Arrive that pray every Saturday from 10 to 11. Join us on the Miracle Line on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 o'clock with Evangelist Sharon Walker. Amen. Hallelujah. How many people know what time it is tonight? Offering time. Woo! Blessing time. Amen. Breakthrough time. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're in need of an offering envelope, you can check the seat pocket in front of you or lift your hand and one of our hostesses will serve you with an S-M-I-L-E, a big old smile. Tonight we're going to be reading to you from the gospel according to John chapter 21, verses 1 through 8. I um, want you to remember the Reno 2023 project. You can see now they plastering the walls and doing a little something, something over there. Amen. We want to finish the project. Amen. We want everything paid in full and the project on the project finish and complete glory to God so remember rental 2023 in your giving we ask you to complete your offering envelope in its entirety that you can receive proper credit at the end of the year if you're writing a check write it out to Word of Faith International Christian Center or WOFICC for short um, we got four ways that you can give maybe it's your first time you're online want to share that with you um, the way that you can give online is by going to our website which is wordoffaithstthomas.com you'll see the give online button once you click it you'll be led to give securely through PayPal. Another way that you can give is through Givelify app. You can download it on your Apple or Android device, and once you do that, search for Word of Faith. Another way that you can give is by mailing in your offering envelope to Word of Faith at 8354 St. Canton, St. Thomas VI 00802. And the last way that you can give, the best way, is by joining us in person. We have sun service every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and also Wednesday night starting at 615 with our healing school followed by a midweek Bible study. And you already heard about our prayer services. You have an opportunity to give literally every day of the week. Amen. All right, again, I'm going to be reading to you tonight from the gospel according to John chapter 21 verses 1 through 8 I'm going to be reading from the NIV translation but before I go there I just want to give you a little context regarding this passage of scripture this is shortly um, shortly after dying on the cross and being resurrected Jesus had gone around revealing his resurrected self to different groups of his followers in John 21 1 through 8 we read about a particular time when he returns to a certain group of followers to show himself again and it reads like this afterward Jesus appeared again to his disciple by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now this sounds like a similar account that we read of in John and also the gospel according to Luke. Early in the morning, it says in verse number four, Jesus stood up on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Their obedience brought in a blessing. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed him in the boat. So you got Peter swimming and the other disciples following him in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they not, were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. Now we just read that Peter decided to do what? Go fishing and everybody decided to go with him. I'm going to read verse number four through six again. And when the morning now had come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered, no. No. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. What I want you to know about this tonight is the same thing going to occur in your life. Amen. 
You might be toiling in one area of your life. You might be worn out regarding something in your life. But God says, make a shift. It's time to pivot. Are y'all hearing me tonight? The word pivot means this, an unusual mark change, an adjustment or modification. Some people just may need to make a little modification in their life as to a product, service, or strategy in order to adapt or to improve. The disciples were fishing all night long and they couldn't catch anything. Jesus came to them and began to speak the word right in that place where they had their greatest disappointment. Where do you have your greatest disappointment tonight? God is speaking to that area of your life tonight. Then he told them to cast their net on the side, on the other side of the boat. That means to pivot. It is essential, we, um, he said, you had uh, your net on one side, now you need to cast it on the other side. And when they did, as he had commanded, they had been toiling all night long. Come on, somebody. All night long they had been toiling. And some people been toiling in their life for too long. Come on, somebody. But God is saying, make the adjustment. Make the shift. Make the pivot tonight. And when they did it, they got a long manifested, a, 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 a manifested, they manifested abundance in their life. Glory to God. So God is saying tonight that the floodgates are open to you and God has been speaking to our hearts individually regarding some areas we need to make adjustments some areas we just need to pivot and when we pivot just like the disciples we're going to experience that overflow we're going to experience that abundance we're going to experience that harvest we're going to experience more than enough in our life somebody needs to pivot regarding a relationship amen it's time to let it go glory to God Maybe there's a new assignment that God's been speaking to you about. It's time to make a pivot in your life. Maybe there's some other adjustments he's been speaking to you about in your life. And that could be the very thing hindering you and holding you up in your life. God is saying tonight, you need to pivot. You need to shift. You need to change. And I'm telling you tonight, get ready, get ready, get ready. I hear it in my heart. Glory to God. When you make that adjustment, you can expect to receive accelerated, abundant, accelerated manifestation and demonstration in your life glory to God somebody in here needs to pivot tonight glory to God hallelujah whatever you've been toiling about whatever's been going on in your life glory to God make a shift tonight glory to God pivot so you can receive the abundance that God has for you let's lift up our offering to our great high priest our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and let's just begin to worship God with our giving tonight father we just worship you and adore you Lord God hallelujah we bless you and praise you father we thank you for your word Lord God and father we have our hearts, our hearts and our ears in tune to you tonight, Lord God. Whatever area you speak to, Lord God, we're willing to make the adjustment in our life because you are Lord over everything in our life, Lord God. And Father, we expect to receive, just like the disciples received in this word, an abundant harvest in our life, Lord God. We heard pivot, Lord God. So we're going to make the adjustment, make the shift, Lord God. And Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God, that you honor your word, and we're looking for abundance harvest coming from the north, the south, the east, and from the west. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's make our tithers confession. Say, because I'm a tither, the windows of heaven are open to me. The blessing is pouring out to me because I'm a sower. I'm furnished in abundance for every good work. So I receive my perfect assignments, raises and bonuses, contracts and benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, supernatural wealth transfer, scholarships, tuitions paid in full, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, and properties acquired. I'm getting my buildings, my lands, my houses, my vehicles, my equipment, my businesses, my jobs, and my airplanes. God is bringing into my hand seed. I command my abundant harvest to come. Abundant harvest, come to me now. Harvesting angels, go get it. Bring it to me right now. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe that you receive somebody, give God a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hostess says you may receive the offering. Glory to God. I believe I receive in Jesus' name. Here I am, Lord, to worship you. We're here to honor you in Jesus' name. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you. Thank you for your goodness, your might, ability, and strength.
I pray in my speech and my preaching are not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but only in demonstration of your spirit and of power. I'm thinking that your people's faith should not stand in the wisdom of me, Father, but only in the power of you, because you are the God Almighty. Father, I pray that you would grant unto this servant of our boldness, I may speak forth your word. By stretching forth your hands to heal. And I'm thinking that mighty signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. Father, we come to you in advance for the revelation of knowledge and will flood our hearts and mind with Father God this evening. And we truly believe that that one person will leave this place, leave this room, leave this line the same way they came in. And as always, Father God, we're careful to give you and you alone all the glory, honor, praise. And Holy Spirit, you said as I speak these words, you're going to fall on all those to hear your word. Jesus, you said it yourself. You said, you're going to work with me. And you said, you're going to confirm your word with signs falling. So in expectation of signs falling, somebody's heart changed, somebody's life changed, somebody turned around as a result of you working with me. We thank you, Lord. We believe we receive it. In Jesus' name, when everyone agree, we shout. Come on, shout. Amen. Amen. God is good. Come on, God is good all the time. Come on, lift your Bible up to the Lord. Repeat this after me. Say, this is my Bible. The Bible is God speaking to me. And the Bible is the truth. And it instructs me what to believe and what to think, how to live, how to speak, and how to have victory, and also in it is the path to eternal life. Give God praise like you believe that is so. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. God is good all the time to you and to me. Well, we've been doing a study on how close are we. Are you seeing how close we are? Come on, are you seeing how close we are to the soon coming return of Jesus? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once again, we must remember that nothing in the Bible was written to what? To scare us, but rather it was what? Written to prepare us. Jesus told his disciples that there would be signs along a prophetic road that would verify where we are in time as we approach the end of the age and his next coming. And Jesus listed many signs with, that would indicate we are on the road to the end. And we've been looking at the signs of the end of the age and Christ's soon return that he mentioned to us in, in Matthew chapter 24. And so far we covered the larger topics of mass deception. We covered wars and rumors of wars. We covered nation arising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We covered the famines that are taking place right now, even as we speak, the pestilences, earthquakes, persecutions, and false religions. Now, we know each of these signs we cover so far has the potential to affect thousands and tens of thousands of people at a time. Amen? But the sign we're continuing to study tonight in Matthew 24, 12, where it says, and, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Show wax cold. Like I said last week, this one we need to all pay particular attention to. Because this sign of iniquity abounding with the love of many growing cold can occur in every single home, every single church, every single community, every city, state, nation on the earth, and every island. Come on, say amen, somebody. This is perhaps the most critical of all the occurrences for your life personally as a believer. So he said once again, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Wax cold. In the Greek, the word iniquity describes lawlessness. 
Some might say lawlessness. Glory to God. The literal translation of this verse could be because lawlessness will abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Amen. In fact, Jesus described this sign as a worldwide societal occurrence. And it will happen among sinners and saints across the board as we end, as the end draws near. I said sinners and saints. Now, this word abound on here is the Greek word that means to increase. It means to flourish, and it means to overflow. Jesus was speaking of a worldwide condition in the very last of the last days. And according to Jesus, one consequence of lawlessness is growing cold towards God and growing towards, towards others. Because that's what it says. And that what it says? The blood of many will what? Wax cold. Glory to God. So it's important to note that he said what? The love of many shall what? Wax cold. The word many in the Greek means multitudes. Somebody say multitudes. Come on, say multitudes again. And Jesus wasn't describing something that would affect only a few people here and there, folks. This waxing cold would impact the greater part of mankind, even many, many people in the church. And in Matthew 24, 37, Jesus specifically described the last day society. Notice what he says here. Matthew 24, 37, he specifically described a last day society. He says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also what? The coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were what? Eating, drinking, marrying, Come on, giving in marriage, going to carnival, until the day that Noah, <laughs> until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them what? All the way, so shall, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See, Noah's day, the time before the flood, was a time when immoral behaviors were prevalent in the world. And it wasn't just a few who were affected in that climate of overflowing iniquity and lawlessness. It says the entire population of that time was morally affected. And Jesus foretold that as we entered into the wrap-up of this last age, it would once again be as in the days of Noah. All you do is look at the world around you today. We are right now in the midst of a morality altering period, folks. Moral filth, violence are overflowing through every avenue and medium. I'm talking about television, movies, music, internet, gaming, print, and even educational institutions. And see, we know, and once again, we know what goes on during carnival season. Come on, say amen, somebody. See, man's mind, marvelously created by God, is being damaged by sin. Let me say it again. Man's mind is being damaged by what? Sin. And our youngest members of our society are the most vulnerable. Let me say it again. The youngest members of our society are the most what? Vulnerable. Now, the Apostle Paul also alluded to the issue of mind damage and sin and iniquity when he wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. Ephesians 4, 19. Once again, the Apostle Paul also alluded to the issue of mind damaging sin and iniquity when he wrote by the inspiration of who? The Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, Who being past feeling, somebody say past feeling, have given themselves over to what? Lasciviousness. And to work how? All uncleanliness with greediness. So what does it mean to be past feeling? What does it mean to be past feeling? Let me illustrate it for you. When I was in the Air Force and military, I was stationed in Korea. And I trained in martial arts. And they would tell you to hit something over and over 
and over and over again to make certain to what in certain parts of your hand or your knuckles. Come on. To the point you don't feel any pain anymore. After you built a callus in that area. Come on, say amen, somebody. So you get to a place where you don't feel anything in the area no matter how hard you hit it or no matter how hard you hit the head. <laughs> Come on, say amen, somebody. But this is precisely what happens when a Christian commits sin again and again and again. He eventually grows callous to that sin and he no longer feels the pain that it once produced in his heart. Let me say it again. He eventually goes, he grows callous to that sin and he no longer feels the pain it once produced in his heart. Instead, he adapts to the callousness and he learns to live in sin in that area of his life with no feeling about his wrongdoing. Let me read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19 from the Amplified Translation. Know what it says here. And they, the ungodly in their spiritual what? Apathy, have become what? Callous and what? And what? Unfeeling, having given themselves over as prey to unbridled sensuality. You hear that? Eagerly, eagerly craving the practice of every kind of impurity that their desires may demand. Doesn't that describe the period we're in right now? Doesn't that describe the period we're in right now here in St. Thomas? Minosa says they have become callous and unfeeling. Callous and what? Unfeeling. And Paul loses again when writing to Timothy about the last of the last days in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Let's look at that. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Where he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in their latter time shall some depart from the faith, giving what? Heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies of what? Hypocrisy, having their what? Having their what? Conscience seared with a what? Hot iron. See, when your conscience is seared or callous in an area, this happens when a person participates in sin or dwells on the thoughts of sin again and again and again. See, at first, the sin pricks his conscience. But if he continues to yield to the temptation and routinely applies the pressure of that sin against his heart and soul, are you listening to me out here? He will harden himself just like I hardened my hands through pressure and continual beating at the same area until it formed a callus. Are you following me out here? That person will begin adapting his beliefs and opinions to that sin. You hear what I just said? That person will begin what? Adapting his beliefs and opinions to that sin until he no longer feels the pain of conviction that was once produced by his wrongdoing. There are people who have tolerated sin or sinful thoughts so long that they have lost the ability to feel conviction in that area of their lives. Did you hear what I just said? Let me say it again. There are people who have tolerated sin or sinful thoughts for so long that they have lost the ability to feel conviction in the area of the life. This is why it is vital that all preaching and all teaching is word-based and precise, anointed, and straightforward. Why? Because only that kind of preaching and teaching has the power to shake people from slumber. And keep, their, and keep them tender in their heart and yet strong in their spirit. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. 
So let's see what preaching and teaching does for the heart and soul of a hearer when it's done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now this doesn't include everyone, but it's a fact, folks, that much of the preaching and teaching in pulpits has changed in these last times. Much of what is heard in pulpits today is more motivational than spiritual. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. With the emphasis on living improved lives versus loving God and hating sin, which, by the way, is God's way of, of achieving improved life. Come on, are you with me? Now, the Apostle Paul clearly said that the Holy Spirit inspired preaching to do three things. The Holy Spirit inspired preaching to do three things. Those three things are to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Come on, say that with me. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Inspired preaching should do three things. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. 2 Timothy 4, 2, where he tells Timothy, who was the pastor of Ephesus, he says, preach the word. Be what? An instant in season, out of season. Then he tells him what? Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That means if all the congregation hears is exhortation, which can rightly include motivational-based messages, it means two-thirds of what is, being, what, what is preaching is supposed to be. That means two-thirds of what preaching is supposed to be is completely left out. Inspired preaching should do all three. It should reprove, rebuke, and what? Exhort. And we have to continually keep ourselves stirred up to avoid spiritual complacency, folks. And as I said, good Bible preaching and spirit-empowered expository teaching shakes people from apathy and keeps them strong. They might know what I'm talking about. That's why it's essential that we have all three aspects of preaching of the Word. Reproving, rebuking, and what? Exhorting. But let me explain the difference between the three facets of ministry of the Word, and of, the word of God from 2 Timothy 4.2. Look at that again. Paul commands ministers of the gospel to what? Preach the Word, right? Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. The word reprove is from the Greek word electio. Electio. In this context, it means to convict or to censor a listener with a clear with the clear preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Let's read it again. In this context, it means to convict or censor a listener with the clear preaching and teaching of the Word of God. To reprove is to convict with such effectual feeling that one is brought to a senses. And to point and to the point of wrong conviction, come on, or the point of conviction for wrong action and wrong thinking in his life. In other words, it points them to wrong conviction and wrong thinking in their life. Are you following me out there? And see, the offender must choose either to repent or reject what he knows to be true. And this is the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit to bring change to a person's heart. To bring what? change to person arm, but it requires a personal response from the listener in order to affect change. You hear what I just said? It requires a what? Personal response from the listener in order to affect change. Let's see an example of that in John chapter 8 verse 1. John chapter 8 verse 1. Notice it says that Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and did what? And he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in what? Adultery. 
And when they had set her into the midst, the Amplified Bible caught her in adultery. It says it caught her in adultery. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. In the very act. That means she was actually in bed with this man when they apprehended her. Hello? Then it said, Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith thou? Now what is so hypocritical about this is they left the man in the bed and grabbed the woman. <laughs> and the last I heard, it takes two. Come on, say amen, somebody. Now I don't think she tied him up and forced him to have sex with her like he had no choice. I don't know which one was married. Both or one of them. Come on, say amen, somebody. But they were both caught in the act, but yet they only grabbed the woman. <laughs> Verse 6. This they said, tempting him, that they might what? Have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. I wish I was a fly on the wall <laughs> just so I could see what he was writing. <laughs> Come on, say amen, somebody. But it doesn't say, so that's not the point. He wasn't even paying any attention to them. But I believe he was listening to see how the Father wanted him to handle this situation. So by the Holy Ghost it says, and when, he continued, when they continued asking him, trying to get a response from him, he lifted up himself, said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And just as cool as a cucumber, it says, And again he stooped down and began to write on the ground. <laughs> Come on, say amen, somebody. Jesus is cool, you know. <laughs> amen. What happened? the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit began to change their hearts. And it says in verse 9, and they which heard it being what? Convicted of their, by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the elders even until the last and Jesus was left alone and a woman standing in the midst. Why? Because they may have been with the woman themselves. Or someone else's wife, but just didn't get caught. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. And I can see the oldest one among them saying, whoa. I know I have a lot of sin nobody knows about, but God. Come on, I have a lot of skeletons in the closet. I'm definitely not going to be the one to throw the first stone. Then the young man standing beside him said, I was just with that little cutie last night. Come on, say amen, somebody. Smoking that blunt last night. Come on, that thing's got a little out of hand. Come on, say amen, somebody. I know God sees everything. I'm not going to stand up here like I never did anything wrong, so I'm definitely not going to throw the first stone. And see, that first stone was an important stone because why? Once somebody threw the first stone, everybody else gets involved because why? It doesn't single anybody out. So it says, when Jesus lifted up himself, his head was down all along. He didn't even look at them. He just simply said what he was told to say by the Holy Spirit. And guess what? They were convicted or reproved, and it affected a change. It says, when Jesus looked up, it says, he saw no one <laughs> but the woman. And he said to her, woman, where are thou thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? See, reproving, folks, is, essential, is an essential part of preaching and teaching in order for the Holy Spirit to produce purity and spiritual fire in the church. Let me say it again. Reproving is an essential part of preaching and teaching in order to want for the Holy Spirit to produce purity and spiritual fire in the church. 
So reproving is necessary. Tell your neighbor, reproving is necessary. Well, let's look at rebuke. Rebuke, it comes from the Greek word epitimio. Epitimio. It is the same word as used in the gospel when Jesus rebuked a demon spirit. And what is it? It's a sharp correction that expresses strong disapproval of one's thoughts, actions, or deeds. It points out when an offender is wrong and gives them instruction on how to do what is right. It represses the prevalence of evil and strongly opposes what is wrong in a person or in society. Rebuke. And a good example is when John the Baptist sharply rebuked Herod for living with his mother's wife, his brother's wife. Go to Luke chapter 3, verse 19. John the Baptist sorely rebuked Herod for living with his brother's wife. In Luke 3, 19, it said, But Herod the Tetrarch, being what? Reproved, which means rebuked in this account, by, for, by him for who what? Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done. It hit Herod so hard that he put John in prison for speaking against the evil he was doing. And he knew he was wrong. John's sharp rebuke hit him hard. Why? Because John didn't hold back. Let me say it again. John didn't hold back. But it eventually cost him his life. But he still didn't hold back. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. Another example of a sharp rebuke is in Acts chapter 7, verse 51, when Stephen boldly let the Sahadrian have it. Acts chapter 7, verse 51, where he said, You stiff neck. Can you hear him? <laughs> and uncircumcised in the heart and ears, do you always resist the Holy Ghost as your father did? So do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which, which showed, you, showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you now be what? The betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. But look at their response to the sharp rebuke in verse 54. It says that when they heard, his, heard these things, they were what? They were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with the teeth. I'm pretty sure they was cussing him out. Come on, say amen, somebody. You bleep, the bleep, 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 bleep. And they ended up stoning him to death. So as you see, it takes boldness. Let's say it again. It takes boldness to get in the pulpit and tell it like it is. Some people don't receive it well, and some would like would love to stone you. <laughs> Come on. But it is essential, folks, for sin and sinful behavior to be rebuked by those in the pulpit at the right time in the right setting as led by the Holy Ghost. Let me say it again. It is essential for sin and sinful behavior to be rebuked by those in the pulpit at the right time and in the right setting as led by the Holy Ghost. And see, for a pastor to ignore sin and never address it, it permits the congregation to avoid taking the issue of sin seriously. That's why we got to preach it. Come on, say amen, somebody. And the absence of godly rebuke can even lead believers to become callous to sin. Amen? And it's ravaging consequences. Now let's look at the word exhort. The word exhort, which is from the Greek word perikaleo, and it means to urge, to exhort, or to what? Admonish. It's a type of preaching or teaching that undergirds believers with spiritual strength. And it admonishes them to press forward towards God's highest will, regardless of the opposition faced along the way. Godly exhortation is strong, anointed, and motivational, steering the listener to get cast to, to what? To, to listen to cast off defeat and press on towards the victory. That's what exhortation does. 
A good example is one you're very familiar with is Matthew 6.31. Once again, godly exhortation is strong, anointed, motivational, steering the listener to cast off defeat and press on towards what? Victory. Here in Matthew 6.31, you know this, but I'm reading this from the Living Bible. The Living Bible reads, So don't worry at all about having enough food and clothing. Why be you like the heathen? For they take pride in all these things and are deeply concerned about them. But your heavenly Father already knows perfectly well that you have need of them. And he will give them to you if you just give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to do. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of you. God will take care of you tomorrow. Live one day at a time. This is an exhortation to just keep for you, to keep you what? Just for you to keep pressing and doing what you know to do, and God will take care, take care of the rest. Let me say it again. This is an exhortation to, to do what? To just keep pressing and doing what you know to do, and God will take care of the rest. That's an exhortation. Now, all three of these elements of God's word must be practiced in the church. It must be what? Practiced in the church. Unfortunately, the first two, reproving and rebuke, have largely been put or set aside because why? They're afraid people will get offended and leave the church. Come on, say amen, somebody. And as a result, the deeper issues of the heart that need to be addressed and corrected, which are so vitally important, are often ignored. Are you listening to me out here? Now, this is not always the case, but it's true that most preaching and teaching today consists of exhortation to steer up the saints with a positive message. Just turn on your TV. Go on Facebook. It's all about a positive message. Now, this preaching is it, it's good. Tell your neighbor, it's good. But it leaves out the other two vital elements that are so essential. For what? For people's heart to be convicted and changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And let me be clear. To be accurate and obedient to the call of God as a minister of the gospel, we must reprove rebuke and exhort let me say it again to be obedient to the call of God upon your life you got to what Repute. rebuke and what exhort it can't be all peaches and cream folks it cannot all be guava tarts come on say amen somebody <laughs> amen hallelujah like it says in 2 Timothy 4.2 we must do it with all long suffering and doctrine. All what? Long suffering and doctrine. Now the word long suffering is the Greek word macrotumia. Macrotumia, which is a compound of two words, macros and tumus. The word macros indicates something that is distant, far, or of long duration. The word thumas means anger, but it also embodies the idea of swelling emotions or a strong and growing passion about something. So macrothumia could also be translated as the words forbearance and patience. Say that with me. Say forbearance and patience. See, it's like a candle that has a very long wick. And it's therefore prepared to burn a long time. Now it's ready to forbear and patiently wait until someone finally comes around and makes progress. Changes. Or bears what you're trying to communicate to them or him or her. See, preaching and teaching with all long suffering means that we who preach must do it over and over and over and over again until the message preached is understood, embraced, and brings out life transformation. 
We got to do it over and over and over again. And people sit up there, I heard that before. If you heard it, why ain't you doing it? Come on, say amen, somebody. There will never be a time when reproving, rebuking, and exhorting will not be needed in the church. Never be a time. That's why we must study and equip ourselves as ministers to continually bring these three elements of the word to God's people, folks. But unfortunately, many times when a minister skillfully and compassionately reproves and rebukes in obedience to God's charge on his life, he is vilified as being critical and negative. But that comes along with the territory. Oh, come on. Say amen, somebody. In some cases, the ministers themselves are bullied and abused by congregations. For what? For fulfilling the commandment to preach the word, reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. But the commandments don't change, folks. He charges this minister to do what? Preach the word without compromise, regardless of the consequences. That's why back in the day they said, just look, pick, you know, when they give you those looks, just pick a spot on the wall. <laughs> Don't look at their faces. Come on, say amen, somebody. But let me read this from the Amplified Translation, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. It says, preach the word. As a what? An official messenger. It says, be ready when the time is right and even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency. Whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or what? Unwelcome. Correct. Those who err in doctrine and what? Behavior. Warn those who what? Sin. Exhort and encourage those who are what? Growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faith teaching. But then you get to verse 3. It says, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction. The key is here. That challenges them with God's truth. People don't want to be challenged today. That's why they, they vilify you. Because they don't want to be challenged. They don't want to be told this is not something you this is something you're not supposed to do. You can do better. It says that challenged them with the girl truth, but ha but wanted to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers. Be online. Come on, listen to things that tickles their ears, that agrees with the mess that they believe. Come on, it says they accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another. Come on. Facebook is full of them. The Internet is full of them. Come on, your cable TV is full of them. One after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires. But listen to this. And to support the errors that they hold. Let me say it again. To support the errors that they hold. This is what we're dealing with in these last days. They'll find teachers to support the errors that they hold. I've seen that personally with my sister. I had a sister. She grew up, you know, she, my grandmother raised her for the most part. My grandmother used to always teach hellfire. Hellfire. <laughs> Mrs. Just, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. 
So she didn't believe in hell. She didn't believe in hell. She didn't believe it was there because that's all she heard. You're going to hell. So what happened as she got older, she found a religion that don't believe in hell. And she joined the Jehovah Witnesses. Because <laughs> they don't believe in hell. And she's a Jehovah Witness even up to the day. I'm praying for her. <laughs> Amen. But she found something to support the error that she held in her heart. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. We're living in the last days, folks. As we close, let's go back to Matthew 24, 12. Are you getting anything out of this? It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Wax cold. What does it actually mean to wax cold? The words wax cold are a translation of a Greek word that means to progressively become cold-hearted. To progressively become what? Cold-hearted. It depicts people who have become numbed. Numbed. Perhaps by personal sin, by the conditioning or the condoning of sin in others, by the condoning of sin in others, or by a sinful environment. Perhaps they have become cold spiritually by allowing the moral changes of the world around them to negatively affect their own standards. The lawlessness that abounds more and more may have rubbed off on them as well. It come my masha. See, to maintain our fire for Jesus in these last times, we must withdraw from ungodly influences that numb us to the consequences of sin. You got to withdraw. To your neighbor, you got to withdraw. It's essential that we what? Stay close to the fire of the Spirit if we're going to stay passionate in our love for Jesus. Amen? If we make any other choice, folks, we run the risk of allowing lawlessness that is running amok in the world to start affecting us. And just as Jesus said, our love will grow cold. You hear what I just said? So let's purposely do what? Draw near to the fire of the Holy Spirit. Why? Jesus is coming soon, folks. Let me say it again. Jesus is coming soon. And when he comes to evacuate the church from the planet Earth, we don't want him to find that we are wax cold and we've grown disinterested in the faith. Last scripture, Luke 8, 17, 18, 17. This is a story of the unjust judge. This, was, this wasn't God, but it was, it was just giving us an example of the character of God. At the end of this account, it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear him long with them? I tell you that he will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Hallelujah. And I say yes. If not anybody else, he should find faith in the people in this room. Or those watching online. Because why? We will not compromise our faith. And what we know is right. Come on, say amen, somebody. Lift your hands and give God praise. Come on, lift your hands and give God glory. Will he find faith? Yes, I believe he's going to find faith. Glory to God. Because we are not going to compromise. But people, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, you just see it, folks. You see it. You see it. Matter of fact, they're getting to the point on these juvets, they're not even wearing no clothes at all anymore. They might as well not. It's just getting to that point. And the sad part about it 
is when you have your child two or three and four and five and six and seven and eight years old being affected by that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's sad. But then one of the days Jesus said these things would happen. He said look for them. When you see them you know I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. Even what's going on in Jerusalem, you know Jesus is coming soon, folks. But did you see what God did? Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Did you see what God did? They sent all those rockets from so-called powerful Iran, and they did nothing. Because God showed himself strong. Because that could have escalated in World War III. If there was some significant damage. But you still keep, always keep your eyes on Jerusalem. Because it's not over yet. Keep your eyes on Jerusalem. Because why? That's the center of the world. Everything on this planet revolves around Jerusalem. That's why you keep up with what's going on in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank and we praise you for your word today. Father God, we pray that we never become numb to the consequences of sin. We pray that we come close to the fire of the Holy Ghost. We stay passionate in our love for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, to keep our fire burning to do what is right. Be ready to receive reproof, rebuke, and exhortation. Because as believers, we need all three. So we thank you, Lord. We welcome it. We welcome it, Lord. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. All heads, all heads bowed and eyes closed in prayer. If you're, here, if you're here and you're not saved, you're not sure you're saved, I'm pretty sure everybody in the room is saved. But if you're online and you're not saved, or you're not sure you're saved, I want to pray for him with you today. You know God loves you so much. And if you're in the category that we described today, where you become callous to what you're doing, to the point your spirit doesn't even convict you anymore, I want to pray for you. I hope somewhere in this message you say, I need get out of what I'm doing right now because I know God's not pleased if that's you I want to pray for you today if you're watching online because God only wants the best for you he's not trying to take your fun away from you he knows that sin kills and it will kill you or it'll rob you of something in your life. It's just a matter of time. So he encourages you to get out of it. Get back under the umbrella of protection. So that he can protect you and watch over you. And speak words into your heart. To lead and guide you into the right direction. So if that's you... You say, Pastor Walker, I just want to confess whatever it is. I want you to do that right now. And I want to pray for you. If you want to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, make sure that heaven's going to be your home. Repeat this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I believe he died for me on that cross at Calvary where he carried my sins for me. 
they put him in a grave but he is no longer there he is alive right now dear Lord Jesus come into my heart come into my life save me now I repent of sin and I turn away from it Lord Jesus you are my Lord my Savior and my Master therefore I know I am born again. Hallelujah. If you qualify for the first John 1 9, well, you know you're in deep into something and you're trying to get out. It's got to the point where you don't know how to get out. Well, God can get you out of that. He can soften your heart again. But you got to come to Him. Accept the reproof, accept the rebuke. Allow him exhort you to come on back. Press past this. So that's you. I want to pray for you. You tell God where you missed it. Father, we thank and we praise you right now, Father God. You said in your word, Father God, if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you right now. They're doing that right now. They're confessing whatever errors they have in their life, Father God. And you are right now, Father God, making all things brand new in their life. So we thank and we praise you right now, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you're washing the sins away and you said you remember their sins no more. Hallelujah. If you don't have a church home, we desire to make this your church home. We believe this is the right church for you. One thing you're going to get in this church is going to get the L-O-V-E, love, the word of God, and we are a praying church. Hallelujah. And we would love to pray with you. So if that's you, amen, put in the chat that you want to be a part of this family. Or go on our website, Word of Faith St. Thomas, or our email, Word of Faith VI gmail.com. Word of Faith VI gmail.com. Let us know that you want to be a part of our assembly, part of our family. And we want to receive you into our family. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Would you get anything out of the Word of God today? Come on, did you get anything out of the Word of God today? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. We'll first take a neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor, know this. God loves you. Pastor Walker loves you. Minister Walker loves you. Minister Walker III loves you. And I love you too. Have a blessed and victorious evening. Let me pray. Father, I ask you to bless and watch and guard to keep this congregation. Lord, make your face shine upon them, enlighten them, and be gracious, kind, merciful, giving favor to them. Lord, lift up your approving confidence upon them and give them peace and tranquility of the heart and life continually. Put your name upon them, Father God, and bless them tremendously. Father, I constantly pray for them that our God, you'll count them worthy of your calling to faith, with your power, fulfill every desire for goodness and complete their every work of faith so that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in them by what they do. And they in him, according to the gracious grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. For I plead, Father God, that there be a people of character, people of courage. They'll stand firm and spiritually mature fully assured in all the will of God. And everyone agree in that prayer, shout, amen, shout, amen, you are dead.